Hey there, I trust you're well. I certainly am. Welcome to my channel, Be in the Garden, which is where I am. They promised us a beautiful spring day, but with lots of sun with lots of sunshine, but alas, today is not that day. But hey, still, you've got to get things done, right? So I'm in the garden and I am going to do a small project, but one that I've been meaning to do for a while. You know those days when you haven't got anything specific to do in the garden? Today is one of those days. And what I'm going to try and do is look, sort out some of my plant labels. You see that? My plant labels. So um, I've had these for many years. They're fantastic. Just pop them into the ground. But they're looking a little bit somehow. And I just want to go over some of them, actually, and put some new names on different plants as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. How I'm going to do it, I'm not sure I've not done this before, but you know how in the bottom of your shed or in a cupboard somewhere you have some old paint? Well, I've managed to find some. It says quick drying for wood and metal. Again, I'm not being sponsored, so I'm just showing you what it is just in case it works well. And it's not recommended for this in particular, but this is what I'm going to be using. found an old paint brush all-purpose paint and varnish brush you know in your shed you've got everything you need there's no need to go to the stores so I'll be using that so my goal today is to paint over the magnetic black labels and then use a mark pen to rewrite it that's my goal let's see how it goes <laughs> Some of them have all but disappeared, the actual names on them. Um, that was for when I had the Wild Rocket. Anemone, September Charm, which I still have. Okay, we're working on a project. In fact, that is the outbuilding that we're making. So you'll hear some sawing and some hammering and all the rest of it. It's all good. We're out in the garden. Ah, oh, the Wisteria. So as you can see, it's all sort of become a little hard to read. So I'm going to hopefully paint over them. There it goes. Oh, lovely. Spin them around and there we go. I told you you fried everything in your shed. I've just fold, uh, found an old cloth and a little bit of sandpaper. So all I'm going to do is my sandpaper. Right, so what I'm going to do is just wipe it down, sand it down lightly, Okay, so rub and sand. That's what we're going to do. Okay, dust. We'll call it dust and rub. Dust and rub. Dust and rub. So here we go. I thought I was filming and I clearly wasn't. So I've actually started painting one of these and it seems to 
Yeah, let me put that second glove back on. It seems to be doing <coughs> very nicely, actually. Ooh, just got a little bit of a croaky throat for a second. Let's get those gloves back on. Give it a quick stir. And these are magnetic. to do is <clears throat> give it a <coughs> oh dear give it a good coat of paint it's going on nicely I think I'll point um, I'll paint the back side as well so that if I need to I can have two different names Let's see. okay and as i said we're doing some tasks around the garden so you will hear the hammer going and the saw because of a few garden projects we have going on around today definitely not a hot day today despite what the weather people said there we go, that will do. Something like that. And then I'll place it here for drying. That's nice. Let's do some more. Oh, this plant here is lovely. <clears throat> um, liquid amber, or its full name, or its Latin name is... Strarasifua. Yes, yeah, Star Strarasifua, um, liquid amber. I'm sure there's some other names for it as well. But liquid amber, check that one out. Honestly, it's a beautiful tree. Definitely worth having in the garden if you can. Love it. It um, really brings the best of itself out in the autumn time when its leaves start changing colour from the green which it it will be during the spring and summer time and then in the autumn time the leaves oh there's a little drizzle of paint and i don't want it to go on the table i should have used an old dust sheet on here really shouldn't i so the leaves in the spring and summer time are green but come autumn they start to change yellow and then a beautiful amber and parts of it red. So hence the name, liquid amber. But you need to see that tree in all its glory to appreciate what it can do. And um, if I were to choose one tree, if I had a small garden or, I mean the tree itself grows to a medium size, I would say. So it's not like an oak tree or anything like that. Um, let's see. So the liquid amber tree, I'd say is a medium sized tree. It's not like an oak tree or, you know, a sycamore tree. I do think it's something that you could have in a small to medium garden and certainly in a large garden, but it's just the beautiful levels of colors it produces in the autumn. And that's why for me, it's a great tree and I would definitely recommend it. So, as you know, we're doing a project on the building besides me, and um, hence the soaring. Just got to get on with jobs, though, don't we, around the garden? So I will show you that tree, actually, the liquid amber. I will show you that. At the moment, it's not really much to show. There isn't really much to show about the tree at the moment. It's just putting on its green leaves. So this here is the liquid amber. As I said, at this time of year, it does not look like much. The leaves are a sort of palmatum shape, you know, like a five palm. It looks very ace-like, but it does not look like much at this time of the year. But when we come back in the autumn, you'll see the beauty of 
this tree when it's a sunny autumn evening and you just see the leaves glistening in the sun it's a beautiful tree and definitely i recommend that one i think there's only one downside to that tree there's only one downside and that's because and that to me is because it's a it's deciduous it loses its leaves i wish it could keep its leaves all through the year but alas um we have to be patient with that tree it loses all its leaves in the winter and then in the springtime they grow back green and before you know it you have a plain looking tree in the summer if i'm honest and then i think it's at its best in the autumn time okay it's working let that dry up you know, I'm just wondering whether I should also paint the stands. This is, um, the way they came is sort of this sort of rustic, you know, shabby chic sort of look effect. Um, so they are looking very much like they were when they were first purchased. This sort of, you know, brushed off shabby chicish sort of thing. So I'm wondering, sh shall I leave these as they are? Shall I paint these as well? Shall I leave them? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to leave these as they are. They're actually perfect as they are. And then this is what it will look like once the paint dries. <clears throat> I don't want to put my fingers in it. Looks good, right? And then I use the white chalk pen to paint the name of the plant. So they're looking back to being brand new again. I love that. That's going to be great. They're going to look good. Okay, so really that's my task today, just to keep painting. But why don't you hang around with me, ask me some questions, so that whilst I'm doing this job here, I can answer some questions. What's my next job in the garden? I have no idea. It might be to... Okay, look, I'm just going to look around and just sort of see what's happening in... Oh, I'm sitting underneath the magnolia tree. Um, but it's looking really lovely. The, 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 the blossoms have come and gone. And what we have now and again i'll probably put a little snippet of what it's looking like now it's just got the green leaves and the occasional the occasional blossom is still hanging in there on the tree so that's where i'm doing this particular garden task just underneath the magnolia and here is the magnolia there are a few blossoms remaining but for the most part they have come, they've been enjoyed, and they have gone. And what we have now is the tree. That's now almost lost all its blossom, but it's still lovely at this time of year. And I think last year I... Um, pruned back some of the lower branches to allow me to put this seating area underneath here. It's looking a little untidy, which is fine because we're working on a project just here. What else is I look in my garden? Another job that I might get up to this weekend in the garden. Oh, the banana plant. So the magnolia tree is just to my right, the way I'm sitting, and just shortly thereafter is the banana plant. And if you haven't already, you do need to go back and watch my video on when I removed the winter protection on the plant. Um, and I kind of need to bring you up to date on how it's doing, to be honest. It's definitely putting on leaves, foliage, 
and one of the plants, I think I was a little concerned that maybe it wasn't going to do so well. It is growing, but perhaps not at, not at the same speed as some of the others, but I'm happy that it's putting on some growth at all because I was concerned that it may not even grow at all. I thought maybe the winter somehow had caused it to um, not survive. Also, the one I was concerned about, um, there were lots of small plants coming from there. They call them pups. So there were lots of pups coming from there. When I say lots, actually, I think there were about three or four and they can take a lot of the energy away from the main or the mother plant and so that was another reason for me being concerned but it looks like it's doing just fine also to my right in front of the banana plant i have a few hookeras yes i have some hookeras there and if you compare this to the previous video you can see how much more foliage it has put on. I love the burgundy colour because I do think it gives quite a lovely contrast against the green 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 of the banana plant. I've got a few scattered in between here as well amongst the comfrey. They're fighting with the comfrey I can see in a nice way of course everything here is in harmony but the comfrey is definitely winning. Okay Oh, speaking of which, here's a label for the hookerers. And in, I think, one of the previous videos as well, it could have been with the banana plant, I was telling you how the hookerers at that time of year, which was really early, early spring, how they look very battered and underwhelming, if that's a word, underwhelming. Underwhelming? A word? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> he doesn't know if underwhelming is a word, but I know you know what I mean by underwhelming. But anyway, so this hookera is um what's another word I could use instead of underwhelming? Hmm. Listen, type in the description below what other word I could use instead of underwhelming. I know you know what I mean, but I'm not sure if underwhelming is actually uh, is actually correct grammar. But anyway, so anyway, the hookers were not looking at their best in the early, early spring. They're definitely putting on some foliage now, some heights now. And their flowers are really quite lovely. Very delicate, 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 delicate flowers. Um, a bit too early for that, but... Um, they are putting on some lovely foliage and the ones I have there are burgundy in colour so it's a lovely contrast against the green foliage of the banana plants and the comfrey. Okay, so that's going quite well. I'm liking that. That's nice. The labels. Hopefully they'll be dry by tomorrow and then I can put some names on them. Um, you know, I got a little bit lazy here and I just put down apple tree. <laughs> um, but I have several in the garden and at this time of year, springtime, they have put on a lot, a lot, a lot of blossom, uh, the flowers they have. And... The one I'm looking at, actually a lot of the blossoms have um, progressed to the next stage where they've been pollinated by beneficial insects, maybe my honeybees and anyway other beneficial insects. Um, some of the um, apple trees I'm looking at there have few blossoms left but the blossoms where they've been pollinated are beginning to... In fact, I might have to go closer to that plant as well and see how that one's doing, that tree. Um, but they look as if they're beginning to show the signs of the beginnings of apples. So what else have I got to the right of me? 
um, ah, the tricuspidata, the parthenosis tricuspidata, um, or one of them is called Virginia creeper, and sometimes there's another version called the Boston creeper. They sound like dangerous people, don't they? But these are beautiful flowers, beautiful plants. They're climbers and they can become a really, they can become very, very tall. Or, or, or rather, I should say, they, they can cover a huge area. You sometimes see them in um, like listed buildings and museums, um, town halls, this amazing, foliage that climbs up the sides of the trees during the spring summertime they're green the foliage is green but come late autumn the leaves change into a beautiful crimson red crushed red bright red that glistens in the autumn sun just a fantastic color so virginia creeper boston is it called boston ivy or boston creeper i forget now but anyway, I will probably give you a bit of an update on what that's looking like as well. So anyway, let me get on with this and I'll show you snippets of some of those plants I was talking about and trees, how they're progressing. And then the next part of this video, well, I'll have to wait till tomorrow for the, the black paint to dry so that I can then scribe onto it in white paint the new plants. And then I'll perhaps show you the plants, the plant labels in their positions to show you the trees. I hope that has been a lovely video for you. So for now, all that's left for you to do, I keep getting excited when I pick up these labels. Look at this one here, the oriental poppies. They are putting on great foliage right now and ooh, perhaps in the next week or so, I should imagine, the poppy heads are beginning to grow and swell. But certainly in the next couple of weeks, we should be seeing how they are doing in the garden. But I was about to say, I will see you in the next part of this video because I'm just going to carry on painting these labels, leave them to dry, and then come back to finish off this project tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I will love ya. Tomorrow, you're always the... Yes, they, pro they, they, they promised us sun today, but maybe the sun will come out tomorrow. So let's sing that song together. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bum dollar at tomorrow there'll be sun just thinking about tomorrow I don't know all the words dust away the cobwebs and your sorrows I'm making up the words you know that till there's none angry and lonely i just stick up my chin and grin and say tomorrow tomorrow i will love you tomorrow you're only a day away tomorrow to Tomorrow, I will love ya. Tomorrow, you're only a day away. This is lovely. I'm really enjoying your company. Thank you for being with me in the garden. I'm just having fun. I'm just getting on with some projects around the garden, and you've chosen to come and keep me company. I appreciate that. I do. Listen, whilst you're waiting and watching, be sure to press that like button. 
be sure to give that thumbs up because other people can get to hear me sing. Listen, that's, I mean, I'm just keeping myself company really with all that singing. But, um, but do, a thumbs up. Zan Ter, this one I can't pronounce. I'll paint over it because I really can't pronounce that one. It's so relaxing. So relaxing being out here. Listen to the birds. There is a plane ahead at the moment, but I'm focusing on the sounds of nature. I can hear loads of birds in the background. It's beautiful. Well, I have two more to do. Besides this one, I have two more to do. And then that's the original. That's the painted. And it just sits in there. And then, hopefully, when it's, it's a bit like a chalkboard type thing, I'll put the name of the plant on there and then put them into their new positions. Okay, so I will see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, take care, take care. All right, thank you so much for your company so far. I'll see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, let me show you some of those plants I was telling you about to show you just how far they've come along. I had a video on how I pruned this back. I think it was around February time and the smell from here, the aroma is absolutely beautiful. So the wisteria, I'll put a label up for this as well. That's um, what they're looking like now with the chandeliers of beautiful flowers. Here we go, that's the wisteria with bunches, they always look grape-like, bunches of bloom. And they are absolutely, absolutely beautiful to look at, to see, and to smell. That's the wisteria. There's another area with the tricuspidata. You can just see the hint of the red on parts of the leaves, the hint. It comes springtime, this whole fence will turn as if it's on fire in a beautiful way. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here we are the following day and these labels have dried beautifully. I'm going to now use my marker pen and write them up. I've got a list of plants that I have in the garden here and I'm going to go through these labels. So let's just have another conversation as I do. Well, what are your plans for today? Mine is to get these labels done and then at some point today, I have lots of little hobbies. I'll be playing steel pan. I might even give you a little taste for something I'm learning, who knows. what I'll be up to anyway later on today. Um, gardening wise, the weather is better. Remember I sang to you yesterday about the sun will come out. <laughs> well, it's come out somewhat. I want a bit more, please. Is that me being greedy? Right, my pen really isn't working very much, so I'm going to have to... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Spoke too soon. It's on its way. You know those lids that you have to... Um, the tips that you have to sort of press to release the paint or the ink? That's what I'm having to do. Hey people, I've been trying to finish off this video, but I got a call for a swarm of bees, and so I had to go and rescue another swarm of bees. So, um, 
but I need to finish this project. This is so that when I put my veil on, the, this provides a little bit of, because my veil was kind of sticking towards my face. I'm really hot and sweaty. Remember, I asked for the sun to come out today, so I cannot complain there. Anyway, let me get on with this job here. Um, remember, I had these paints and they've dried up really nicely. I have my marker pen and I'm going to write these labels up, up, up. So, blank, let's get them going. This one is for the liquid amber. Let's see. Remember, liquid amber is ah, also known as gum tree. Liquid amber stry star ra se. Lua Wonderful There's another label We pop that onto that And we have our Plant label So I've just had to catch another swarm of these And um, I don't know for sure if the queen was present I'll be able to check in that hive in a couple of days And see if she's present but it's actually quite um, adrenaline rushing, if that makes sense. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush. You have to sort of have all your things at hand and climb up ladders and get all your equipment ready. So it's quite a big deal in many ways. So this is quite relaxing. I'm looking forward to just getting through these labels now. Um, this one is for the Magnolia, Susan. So let's get her name written. Mag. No, Leah. And Susan goes inside single quotations. Susan. So that's who the Magnolia is. One of these. And we're good to go. Okay. So I'm just going to carry on doing that and then I'll plant them by the trees accordingly, okay? You can stay and watch, of course you can, of course you can. Parthenocosis Boston Ivy. That was just on the side actually. If you look back at the beginning of this video, you'll see that one just sort of growing to the side of you on the fence. Uh, Have you ever seen a swarm of bees? You know what? You can often hear them before you see them. They're really loud. People describe it as hearing, um, you know, like an electric piece of machinery. Okay, that will do. Do you know what to do if you do see or hear a swarm of bees? Well, my recommendation first is do not panic. For the most part, it can vary, but likely it will be the queen. I remember I've got a project going on on the side here, so you'll be hearing a drill. If you hear a drill, it's not a swarm of bees on this occasion. <laughs> So do not panic. For the most part, when you see a swarm, it's likely to be the queen and the ones that are foragers. There's no babies, and there's no brood, there's no you know, young bees, neither larva or, uh, or pupae. So they don't have anything to protect, in essence. So they're not likely to be aggressive, to be honest, during a swarm, they're not likely to be aggressive, but I do always suit up because I don't know where they're from, whose bees they are, so I do protect myself just in the event. But for the most part, if you see a swarm of bees, 
um, do not panic and just get hold of your local beekeeper association. Sometimes if you call the local pest department, they will contact the local bee keeper or bee association in your area and then they will deal with it because bees are protected unlike the wasps wasps can be annihilated for want of a better word but bees are protected they need to be found a home it is nice and relaxing catching bees is different on every occasion because you don't really know what you will find you don't always know the size of the hive you don't know their temperament although I've said for the most part they are genteel not always but for the most part they are genteel and again you're often finding that you have to climb up ladders balance whilst you hold the nuke box which is a small box in which to put the hive and then of course you've got to know what to do with the new nuke will you join them into another hive that might be a weak hive in comparison to others will you make a whole new hive so there are decisions to be had when you are I kind of run out of space can you see but I managed to squeeze it in so you're sort of make, you're sort of thinking on your feet if you like you know climbing up the ladder is it best to shake the bees in is it best to cut the branch um, obviously it depends on where you find them so this one the magnetic field is not so strong on this one that's probably why. That's better. Pitisporum. And I'll show you that tree. We have got here we have another one. There we go, all the way up to this tree. This one is the one growing up the wall. So we get to plant this here. This is the magnolia. Bamboo, not bamboo. Why do I always say bamboo when you know I mean banana? And it even says banana. 
These are still really small at this stage, but this is them. Okay, their barks will become an amazing white shape, probably after about three or four years, but for now they're young saplings almost, but that's what that one is. And here it is. Sometimes there's the burgundy one and they call it, oh, is it firebush? It has this sort of really fluffy flower type feature. So that's that one there. Sporum. I love this one because I managed to prune this back when it was really young. I got this one in the sale. Remember I told you in one of my other videos how I go at winter time, during winter time, to purchase things in the sale. And I love the fact that it's um, a multi-stemmed, three-stemmed tree and then it splits into four at the back. So I love this tree. I really, really do. And I paid next to nothing for this. I think I may have paid a pound or even two pounds for this tree and it's just served me very well. So that's it there, Pittisporum. Just putting on the foliage on the oriental poppy at the moment, flowers have yet to show their faces. This is it there. Euronymus is at the back and the lavender is in the front. And that's so Euronymus at the back and the lavender at the front. The lavender is yet to flower. Liquid amber, gum tree. This is the one that turns a beautiful amber, gold and green in the autumn. The amazing aroma at this time of year, incredible. This is the wisteria. Now they have flowered for the year. You'll have to check out the video about the prairie fire, crab apple, to see how amazing they do look in the spring. I'm trying hard not to let the slugs and snails eat this to pieces because of all the plants in the garden, this is definitely among the top three plants that a slug or a snail will absolutely ravage. And um, I come out here and I pick the slugs and snails out because as you know, I don't use any pesticides or any chemicals in my garden. So I'm at the mercy of hand picking out the slugs and snails. And at the moment, they're, they're wreaking havoc. But that's the hosta. I've even put them in a, a raised pot in order to try and deter them, but they are still finding their way in. And that's this here. And I've trimmed that into a hedge. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate that you have come and kept me company through this process. 
I look forward to seeing you in my next video. For now, take care. Please leave a comment, a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. I see you beginning to subscribe. Thank you to those of you who have already. Much appreciated. And of course, feel free to leave me a comment. Till next time, be in the garden. Bye.